Hi everyone, my name is Zach and welcome to this commented time lapse about this goat skull sculpting I created in Blender. This video only contains the sculpting process which took me about two hours. Altogether with sculpting, shading, lighting and rendering this took me about three hours. If you want to know a little bit more about it, for example how I created the procedural shader that you simply can drag and drop on your high resolution mesh and then it looks just fine. I've prepared a complete tutorial about that for you. Also another video where I show you how I create the cracks, the horns and the holes and also the full non-commented sculpting video in real time. So you can see and follow the whole process from start to finish. In addition to that you receive the project files with a shader for example you can use for your project if you like. And also you receive the brand new sculpting sheet sheet with all sculpting brushes and blender sculpt mode shortcuts you need to know. Yeah, and if you want to have this whole bonus pack you can buy it on Gumroad. The link you find in the video description and the best thing is you support my work so that I can create more free videos in the future. Thanks a lot and now have fun with this commented time lapse. As always I start with a basic cube subdivided with a subsurf modifier and I add some reference images to the background and to the UV image editor and now with some basic objects I shape my base mesh. Then I use a crease cut from the sculpt tools add-on you can download for free. Then I simply can paint a crease and cut things off. So this was also helpful to shape a little bit of the object. Now I smooth the surface a little bit and also add the first details with a clay stripes brush and for the holes I use the inverted blob brush. Here I had some troubles with the mirroring but I fixed that. Then I use the snake hook brush for shaping main parts, bigger parts of the object. And here I add a hole using a simple boolean operation using the sculpt tools. And now adding more details. On my second screen I always open up additional references so I can check all that. With the snake hook brush you also can pull off new geometry out of your object. This is very helpful. And with thin objects here always use the front faces only option you can enable in the brush settings. Here I played around with the horns. I will change them later. So you basically see how I created two different kinds of horns. I also um, adjusted the camera perspective because I only wanted to sculpt the things that I see from the camera perspective. So if you take a look at the back of this object there I don't add any details only to the top and the front and the sides of the object. Basically that what you can see. And with the snake hook brush you also can shape the object according to the background image. Then with a simple extruded plane I add the T's, duplicate them in edit mode using the mirror modifier to mirror them and then again with dynamic topology sculpting I sculpt the shape according to the reference image. All in all I always use dynamic topology for sculpting and there I also enable the option constant detail so that we only paint the details we like and with the detail size value we can change how much details we add to our object. So I start with a very rough shape and then step by step I decrease this value so that we have more details. Here you can see how I shaped this horn but yeah I realized that I want to change this later on. You can see the reference image I have downloaded here somewhere from the internet. Sorry if I don't give credits here. Yeah now I create the new horns. I added a simple object 
at the screw modifier and basically I created this circular shaped edge here and with Alt C I can convert this into a mesh. Then I created this circle shape and with the array modifier and the curve modifier I can move it along the curve. Now I simply adjust the curve a little bit and you can see in this way I created the horns. Yeah, the snake hook brush always is useful for shaping bigger parts. Here I add the connection between the skull and the horns. The blob brush was useful and also the inverted crease brush is interesting for adding hard edges, hard shapes. So and I try to make the connection as natural as possible. So then I close the, the open part of the horns at the end and after I was happy with the basic shape I added some details with the simple clay stripes and the crease brush as you can see here just for adding the extra little details. So then I applied the mirror modifier as far as I know and of the T's and uh, shaped the T's a little bit differently. Here I played around with the horns again. And with the blob brush, with the inverted blob brush, I created this the shape in the inner of the horns. And you can see I always try out a lot of things, so not everything works from the first from the first try. Here I add the finer details like the cracks. I have a very high detail size here and then inverted blob brush. And so you can add the final interesting details to the surface. And the overall object has not the highest detail size, but this little cracks add so much detail that you don't need to add this high level of subdivisions everywhere. Yeah, and here we have our final sculpting. Yeah, that's it with this video. I hope you liked it and learned a few things. If so, tell your friends about it. And as mentioned before, if you want to have the bonus content, you find the link in the video description. Thanks a lot and see you in the next video. Goodbye.